Good morning, my classy, classy people. Hope everybody's doing well. And as always, my name is Wayne Bolden. I'm your speaking, of course, right? As always, turn your closed captions on. And you know, tip sheets are available for this upcoming weekend. Uh, email us at speedking24 at yahoo.com. They're 15 bucks, all stakes. Um, well, let's dive right in. Let's kill the commercials for sure. We're going to take a look at the uh, only derby prep race this weekend uh, down there at beautiful uh, Tampa Bay uh, in Tampa, Florida. Uh, it is race number 11. Uh, boys are back in town. Everybody's derby dreaming. And it's 50 points, 20 points, 15, 10, 5, like that. And again, this is a very tricky, tricky race. Um, it is a total full field of 12. I want to dial into our top three uh, picks or four. Uh, and it's kind of tricky, you know. It's one of those races where horses get in or get points that the field is just, I wouldn't say that tough, but it's kind of wide open. And um, so I'm going to be a little cute here. Uh, my top pick uh, in the race, I kept looking over and over, it's the number 10 horse, Champs of Dream, Champions of Dreams. Two wins from five starts, one second. This horse is by the Triple Crown winner, Justify, on the back end by Tappet. Beautiful breeding rating. Uh, Mark Cassie is doing all the training here, and Geraldo is doing the riding. Well, as a two-year-old, uh, Champion, Champion's Dream, Broken Maiden the very first time uh, back in September of last year at Saratoga. So that tells you right there that the horse, uh, they had some hopes for him because you don't take your two-year-old baby in the summertime up to Saratoga unless he or she can run. The horse went gate to wire that day at seven furlongs with Louis Saez in the yarn. Came back 28 days later, October 1st, in the Champagne, the Sloppy Track Champagne, great one, and Blazing Sevens a verify. Uh, verifying uh, won the uh, ram second and Gulfport, the Asmussen ran third. This horse ran fifth by 16, right? Not a disgrace coming out of the maiden special race, finished almost ne finished next to last. So 36 days after that second race, went into the Nassau Stakes, grade three at Aqueduct on November 6. Uh, that is actually the weekend of the Breeders' Cup, but this horse was in New York, went into the Nassau grade three at one flat mile uh, with Irad up and won the race. So this is a grade three winner. Okay, so as a two-year-old, this horse had two wins from uh, three starts. After the November 6th race, they turned the horse out as a two-year-old. They thought they had good, uh, you know, hope going forward. And 69 days later, the horse makes his three-year-old debut. On January 14th, went into a stake race at Tampa, which was the Pasco Stakes, and ran second by a neck. I mean, at 7 to 5 with Sammy Camacho Camucho up, right? Um, and that was a decent race. It was a nice, nice race. And it was a great race off of the two-year-old campaign. So his three, uh, his three-year-old debate on January 14th was very, very nice. It lined up with the Nassau Stakes that he won in November, and then the horse they took him 28 days later on February 11th to the Sam F. Davis uh, Stakes, a uh, Grade Three, uh, six to one with the smooth Tyler Gaffney owner, and the horse didn't run very well that day. I mean, the horse was bumped. Uh, into the first turn, uh, went wide, just a bad, bad race form in between horses, and end up um, uh, easing out of the race, was 11th by 60. No, he didn't just say the horse finished 11th by 60 limps in the Sam F. Davis, and that is not indicative of this horse. So we're going to consider that a non-effort uh, on February 11th. So this horse has not run a top effort uh, other than his three-year-old uh debut on January 14th. I think this horse is sitting on the race, to be honest with you. Back in 28 days off that debacle in the Sam F. Davis Stakes, that is a uh, race you can just uh, draw a line through, um, which makes the horse have plenty of time, and, and, and I consider it's a non-effort. Uh, back to January 14th, 28 days from the February 11th race uh, in due time. Now, the only knock that I would have on Champion's Dream is that he's from the 10 hole, but it's really not a knock. I hate any horse outside the 8 hole. But 
his ground loss, which we know is the enemy to horse racing, but this horse is speedy enough to get out and get over into the first turn where this horse shouldn't be wide into the first turn. Okay, Geraldo should have this horse out and over by the time they hit the clubhouse turn, for sure. So, I mean, back in 28 days, non-effort in that Sam F. Davis, I do see the nice, nice three-year-old return January 14th. I think Mark Cassie had this horse sitting on a very, very nice race. I mean, his two-year-old speed figures are very, very nice, and I would expect, as I develop and project, because that's what we do with young horses, is project how they're going to develop, and I expect that this horse's speed figure would be better than any of his two-year-old numbers, okay? Why? Just through natural aggression and progression. So again, our top pick, being a little cute, hopefully we get a square price, is champion's dream okay that's going to be our top pick here for sure well you're not going to have to look far for our second pick and the likely winner of the race and the horse to beat okay tap it twice well tap tap twice well tap it twice the number six horse i believe that is correct well tap it twice has two wins from three starts and one third has ever not hit the board by tap it on the back end by dunk kurt and it's todd pletcher who has a wealth of riches for three-year-olds this year okay i mean obviously he's got forte and i think he also got um, uh, litigate, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody fact checked me on that. But Tap It Twice is a pretty decent horse and very lightly raced with only three starts with a bunch of upside. The horse broke her ma uh, his maiden on December uh, 17th at Aqueduct, second start of his career. They turned him out for 49 days, made his three year old debut on February 4th at beautiful Hollandale, Florida. That would be Gulfstream in an allowance race and drew off by eight limbs in a mile race with Louis 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 up, right? So now the horse is back in 35 days taking on this great uh, three company. Tell you right now, if they're lollygagging when they turn for home, coming down the lane, you won't have to look far for your winner because this horse can pick them up and land them down. If you want to know who's going to be making up ground down the center of the track, don't look twice. Look at for the number six, right? To complete exactors, wins, or a tri There's just no way on this God's green earth you can leave the number six off, off with any of your exotic weight dreams. Just can't do it. Why? Because the horse is going to be making up too much ground the last 70 yards from home. So the number six to me is the horse to beat here. Probably will be a short price. He was six to five in the allowance race on February 4th. Uh, February 4th. That's right. That's my son's birthday. And Pletcher, you know, again, a wealth of riches when it comes to three-year-olds as well as Brad Cox. So again, you know, the number six horse is clearly, clearly to me the horse to beat. Now, this is where I get a little, little cute at for sure. I mean, I like the number one horse, Lord Miles, right? This horse should be a huge, huge price. And I would suggest that you use this horse underneath in your tries and super factor, right? Our third pick, Lord Miles, and if something goes wrong, maybe you can go buy him. I don't think so, but I think he's worth using in exotics. Lord Miles has only one win from three start, and he's by Curlin, who develops over time the Curlin babies, right? By Majestic Warrior on the back end. Safi Joseph is doing all the condition. And it's Paco Lopez. It's Mrs. Lopez's uh, son doing all the, the ride. Now I know this should make Dave Hammonds happy. The world class Paco Lopez. Right? Yeah, I know Dave Hammonds don't like Paco Lopez. Not quite sure why. He's a world class rider, if you ask me. Having a little fun with Dave Hammond. But yeah, I like Lord Miles to finish underneath here for sure. And um, keep an eye. This is horse should be a huge price. So that'll be our third pick. And I would be almost remiss if I didn't take the same approach with the number three. Cast, uh, classic Legacy. Well, the horse will probably get some attention because he has Irad or T's in the arms. Oh no, is it that guy, Billy Mott? Like I said once, I said it again. The Hall of Famer, the world class Billy Mott. You never want to put anything past Mr. Mott. Well, Classic Legacy, the number three horse, only has one win from four starts, just like uh, Lord Watt Miles, our other long shot in this race, with only one win in one second. By into mischief on the back end by the talented, distorted humor. I mean, how well bred is the number three horse, Classic Legacy? And then when you have the Hall of Famer like Billy Mott calling the uh, plays from the trainer's booth, oh, anything could go. There's Billy Mott and then there's everybody else. Only in my 
opinion, right? But again, to me, here's a horse you should use underneath, right? Now, I don't know how big of a price you're going to get because it is Mott and it is Irad Ortiz. Anything Ortiz touched, the people are going to play. So we made him our fourth choice in here for sure. So that's our top pick. Now, we probably do need to put a little respect on the number um, 10 horse uh, on the number nine horse's name who ran a beautiful race to back she turkin she turkin I guess one win from two starts it's again it's Todd Pletcher uh, a wealth of riches I rad jumped off of this one and went up to Billy Mott's horse but it doesn't mean that the number 10 uh, the number nine horse can't run. So in this year Tampa Derby, we think this is a very, very tricky race, and I would suggest that you find one, the box button, if you find your first three or four horses, and then make sure that you're getting the value here. We love, I wouldn't say love, but yeah, I like this horse, Champions Dreams, a whole bunch. I think Mark Cassie, um, this horse should be sitting on a race, and I expect better, better numbers from this horse than he ran um, in his three-year-old two races, because his two-year-old numbers are just too good so for us it's going to be the number 10 horse champion's dream for sure and our second horse uh, and i believe the horse to beat is the number uh six horse uh tap it twice uh pletcher with the pletcher of riches for sure and louis sias they all got to beat the number six don't leave this one off of any of your tickets. So for us, it's 10 6, and then we get a little cute with the number one horse as our third pick, my, uh, Lord Miles, rounding it out with my boy Billy Mott doing what he do. Got Irad Ortiz. So for us, it's 10 6, 1, 3, in that order. We'll box those up, and maybe we'll even throw the number nine in there because the horse does have good numbers in our box, but we will key the number 10 horse on top of, that's right, the 6, 1, 3. And we'll throw the number nine underneath. We like the number 10 for sure. And this year's what? Tampa Bay Derby. They all got the six to beat. So for us, we really do like the 10 and the six here. A whole bunch. Stay classy, y'all, and all that you do. Let me know what you think, right? Everybody's Derby dreaming. Speed King is here to let you know we love the number 10. For sure. Mark Cassie. Stay classy, y'all. Great weekend coming up for sure.